put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Hulk review. Bruce Banner is involved in an experiment and involving gamma radiation and yeah, he develops the alternate Alter Ego of the Hulk, a seemingly uncontrollable, you know, just creature of pure rage, which you really don't want to mess with. And, yeah, General Ross tries to hunt down the Hulk, while Bruce Banner tries to find a cure for his condition. This... I, I won't be drawing too many comparisons to the, excuse me, 2003 Ang Lee Hulk, partially because I do not remember that film. It made very little of an impression on me. I will say that... I'll, I'll start with what this does better than that. And I would definitely say that this is overall a better film, although arguably this still has some problems. But what this is, what this does really well, it's, it's a great action flick. And it builds up really well the, the Hulk and his eventual nemesis, which I won't give away here, although I think actually some of the trailers spoil it, but... You know, they, they really build it up, and you don't... In fact, for about half this movie, you don't see the Hulk full on. Which doesn't mean that he's not in the first half of the film, not at all. It's, it's just that he's in shadows, or you see the destruction he causes, and you know, things like that. And that really, you know, builds this level of respect for him. He's like... He's like one of the dangerous dinosaurs in Jurassic Park or something. He's something you're afraid of because that's a big part of the Hulk. You know, what if he gets loose somewhere where, you know, that's really crowded? What if, he, you know, he could hurt, potentially kill a lot of people? And that's a big part of, you know, it is this, you know, obviously Jekyll and Hyde kind of, you know, story and... Yeah, you you know, that is a big part of it. And the, the sheer force of the Hulk is also quite vital because that's why Banner feels so, you know, that's why he's so afraid of letting the Hulk loose or of the Hulk getting loose. And that, again, very much, you know, established in this. You, you really get a sense that... It, it, this is not someone you want to mess with, and that's, again, that's something I'd say this does much better than the 2003 movie. And this also has a proper weight to the Hulk, and real muscle, you know, where the 2003, it's been described as sort of weightless, and uh, yeah, I, I kind of second or third that, you know, that, yeah. It didn't feel like it, there was really something there. This one, it feels like it's just... It's basically a guy, only he's huge, you know, he's like, I don't know, three times, four times the size of a normal human being, and with the appropriate extra amount of muscle and, you know, physical force, you know. So, he can throw a car at you, you know, he can, yeah, you know. And this is also a very, very gritty movie you know, very kind of, yeah, I'd say gritty pretty well you know, covers it, which also the 2003 one definitely wasn't. And, yeah, the, the action set pieces 
are really enjoyable. You know, there's... I'd, I'd say this actually balances that really well with the sort of, you know, exposition scenes and development and so on and so forth. Because the action, when it's there, is sort of all-encompassing. It just completely, you know, when there's action, that's what there is, you know, and that's what you're focusing on. And then, the, you know, the rest of the time, it's never really a boring film. And, yeah, you know, the, the story keeps moving along nicely enough. Although, you know, one could say that a good chunk of this is essentially the army, led by General Ross, hunting the Hulk. And that's not necessarily all that interesting for all that long to be watching. Now, General Ross. General Ross and Betty, two of the things that the 2003 Hulk did better, going by my recollection. I'm pretty sure they, they were certainly... Especially the general. He was a more rounded, well-rounded character. In this, he's extremely one-note. I have nothing against William Hurt. I, in fact, respect him quite a bit. But here, I, I'd say it's the writing and the direction, you know. He just gruffly barks out every single line of dialogue. You know, it's, it's like he thought that he was, you know, there to outdo... Our Lee Ermey in Full Metal Jacket, you know, it's it, it, and you know, that's another thing. That movie is excellent, and well, it's quite good. And in that movie, you know, the the yelling and screaming. That's because he's a drill instructor. That's because that you know he's there to break down their humanity. In this, he's you know he's just constantly yelling like that. You know, no matter what he's well, not constantly yelling, but definitely constantly barking out. These, you know, no matter what he says, no matter what who he's talking to or what he's talking about. And it just gets to be really distracting. It's like a, a really bad comedic stereotype, like you're watching SNL or something. Tim Roth is really, really good as the, I think it's Emil Blonsky. He's this Russian-English soldier who's like, you know, he's he's past the age where he should be in the field, but he likes it in the field, you know. He he likes the feel of a gun in his hand. He likes to be in the middle of the combat, you know. He could take, you know, he could become an officer, but he doesn't want that. And he kind of, you know, he finds himself, he, he's part of the team hunting down the Hulk, and he finds himself really... I don't know, kind of just maybe provoked by it, I guess, you know, that that he just, he's not okay with there being something out there that can just challenge him like that. Not when it's his mission to bring it down, you know, so yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna do what it takes to bring the Hulk down, and you know, he, Roth really brings that intensity to it, and without it being, it's actually, it's a more nuanced character than the general, I'd say. And, you know, one that evokes more emotion overall. Now, the casting. I suppose I should also brief, excuse me, briefly mention that in the film, Banner has been away from Betty Ross for a while. By the way, the entire backstory, I mean... Parts of it are told over the course of the film, but it doesn't start with the backstory and then go into... Basically, the backstory is sort of covered in the opening credits. And then the film just... When, once the film actually starts, Bruce Banner is already on the run, you know. Now, Betty has been, you know, away from Banner for a while, so when he gets back, she, of course, is with someone else. And I do like who they chose for that to be. You know, the comic fans will know what I'm talking about one. Once you see the movie, at least. But it's not the fact that she's with someone else. It's the fact that the character is just, he's only there for her to be with someone else while, when Banner comes back, you know. So he has to see her being with someone else. You know, that's the entire point of the character. Because he becomes, he disappears from the movie 
after that point, you know, and really, you could have, I mean, all that would have happened if he hadn't been there was that people would have said, I don't know, would Betty really stay completely, you know, out of relationships for all that time? You know, that's, that's really it. Now, the casting, I gotta talk about Betty, B Betty Ross's casting. I was bewildered when I heard that they cast Liv Tyler as this, because Betty Ross is not this big sex bomb of a character, you know, and we're talking comic books. They have a lot of, you know, yeah, sexy dames, so, yeah, I was very bewildered when I heard that they had cast her in that role, and I still don't completely see it as that great of a decision. I don't know. I suppose it works out well enough, basically. I, I think the director, Le Terrier, and yes, you know, it is the guy who did Clash of the Titans, but it's also the guy who did the Transporter movies, so, you know, you know he can do action well. Just keep him away from 3D. He talks in an interview about how she's really attractive, but she doesn't know it, and that's how he views Betty Ross. I don't see it. Now, Edward Norton, and this is a little, you know, interesting to, to discuss since he won't be in Avengers, but he is a quite good choice for Bruce Banner. You know, it, it makes sense because he does have that kind of edge to him where you can, he can play this really, you know, sort of downtrodden and just very anxious kind of guy, but at the same time you can t kind of feel like he could burst into anger. You know, I mean, he's done that in several other movies extremely well. You know, American History X, what's it called, Fight Club, you know, he just, he has both sides in him and can really, he can make it really credible. I will say that I don't necessarily blame them for recasting him for Avengers because it's, I don't know, it's, it's a good enough performance, certainly, but, I don't know, it just, he isn't, I, I can see someone else in the role, you know, and I, I can't really say that about Thor, Captain America, or especially Iron Man, you know. Anyway, I suppose that pretty well covers the characters. The acting is pretty good, you know, apart from the ones I've already talked about. The action is also very, very immersive. They, they use a lot of close-ups and sort of, you know, not to the... It's, it's well choreographed, by the way. It, it's not so close that you, like, get lost and it's, like chaotic and such, it just, it has that, you feel the impact, you know, when, when someone gets hit or something gets thrown and, you know, crashes into something, you feel the impact. And there's a, some handheld camera during the action also. And the action, it does a nice job of sort of ramping it up over the course of it, you know, and essentially starting in the small, you know, so it doesn't, it's also a film where, in spite of how big the action gets and how intense it is when it's there, it's not a film where you feel like there's too much action, you know. Now, it... Yeah, I suppose that really well covers the effects, of course. The... Well, first of all, they, lay, they look great. And there is this real sort of... I don't know, they, they bring out the personality in the animated... You know, I mean, even when you're looking at the Hulk, you can still kind of tell... I mean, a lot of the time he just looks really ticked off. But when he has to express something else, 
they pull it off. You know, you feel like there is a living being, you know, underneath that CGI. And that's a really important aspect as well. The sort of conflict of, you know, the, the inner conflict of Bruce having to, you know, keep this monster under and having to, you know, lay low and all this, you know, is, you know, plays out quite well, I'd say. The, you know, he has this, what's it called, a pulse reader or something, you know, on, on his wrist, which also sort of doubles as the ticking clock because, you know, when something gets really tense for him, you know, you'll hear it beeping and it'll cut to a shot and you'll see his pulse is, you know, rising and you know what's going to happen. So, you know, that's a quite good tool. The interpersonal relationships are, you know, pretty good, feel, you know, developed enough. Except, again, you know, Betty and the General. The... There is a pretty good amount of humor in this, and it, you know, the jokes tend to work out and not, excuse me, not sort of distract from, you know, a, this is a pretty dark film, a very brutal at times, you know, the action and the violence gets quite brutal. I suppose that actually pretty well covers it. Yeah, I'd, I'd say at the end of the day, it's really just, the best part of it is really the action, and I don't know, if, you know, I've, I've watched this film at least three times now, and, you know, over and over I've, I find myself mostly just enjoying the action scenes, and when it's only that, it does, of course, you know, get less, you know, it makes less of an impact on each successive viewing, even when a lot of time passes between them, so, yeah. But, it is a fun flick, and it's definitely worth watching at least once. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.